Wisconsin, so far at least, has been something of an afterthought in this year's presidential race. The major candidates aren't spending money on advertising here, preferring to focus on states like Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. But we are seeing spending on this year's important U.S. Senate race in Wisconsin. So what do these ads tell us about that contest? We're asking someone who knows Wisconsin well, Professor Ken Goldstein, now with the University of San Francisco, who used to be at UW-Madison. Ken Goldstein, it's good to have you on the program. Delighted to talk with you again. And before we talk about the Senate rate race, a quick question about the presidential contest. They always talk about Wisconsin as a key battleground state, but the, the evidence in terms of advertising certainly doesn't suggest that this year, does it? Uh, no, no, it doesn't, Mike, at all, that there's not been any advertising in the presidential race in Wisconsin. There was some advertising in the primary, obviously, but uh, Wisconsin's always at sort of the bottom of that first tier of battleground states because it actually hasn't gone for, for a Republican since, uh, since 1984. Um, and it looks like we're not going to get into that, or you're not going to get into that uh, uh, realm of battleground states this time around. So, so let's talk about the Senate, where there is spending going on. And, and where have we seen the spending? And what does that tell us about the Feingold-Johnson race? Yeah, the, the Feingold-Johnson race spending is, is interesting. And I also think that the, the nature of the creatives is interesting. You have a race between a challenger who is much better known than the incumbent. Uh, and so you see a lot of the advertising um, by Feingold uh, as, as negative on, on, on Johnson. And most of Johnson's advertising and the interest group advertising that's being done on behalf of Johnson actually positive. Because Johnson, even though he's the incumbent U.S. Senator, has to introduce himself to Wisconsinites more than Feingold does. And it's a case, though, Fein Johnson obviously won in 2010, but he won among an electorate that was vastly smaller than the electorate he's going to face in, uh, in 2016. There's going to be a million people voting in 2016, or a million Wisconsinites voting in 2016, who didn't vote in 2010, and Feingold wants to introduce those people to Ron Johnson, and Ron Johnson wants to introduce those people to Ron Johnson. Ken, who has the overall advantage on the air? So if it's dollars, it's the Republicans. Um, but that's mostly because a lot of the tonnage that's being aired on behalf of Johnson is being done by outside groups who, who pay more. When you actually look at punches landed, um, the Democrats have a bit of an advantage, um, although there's a couple day parts uh, where, where Republicans have an advantage. So where Republicans are buying is in pricey prime time, and they have an advantage there in most Wisconsin markets, um, but Feingold has an advantage in most of the other day parts. And, and are we seeing other groups in the final weeks of this campaign? Are we likely to see other groups coming into this race in any meaningful way? Well, I think that's what you can pay attention to. Uh, you know, as you heard me say lots, lots, lots of times, advertising is a tell. And uh, I've someone who always thought that this was that this was Russ Feingold's race to lose, and that it was a real uphill battle for for Ron Johnson. Um, and let's see if those outside Republican groups, some of them who seem to have made the decision that the race is already over, some are some are still in play. So if we see big outside money coming in. Uh, we, we not only need to pay attention to the Super Marquette poll, but we'll know that the internal polls are showing it's close. If we don't see that outside money coming in, that's a big tell. That's a big indication that outside groups, Republican groups, are writing the race off. Professor Ken Goldstein, uh, always great to talk with you, Ken. Uh, he is the director of the USF in D.C. program. Thanks so much for being with us today. Pleasure to be here. And next, a call for political diversity in campus speakers.